The hunting of whales dates back to prehistoric time and has evolved by many means. Every year, over 1,400 whales are killed and harvested, even though there's an international ban on whaling. Most of these whales are killed off the coast of Asia and in the Southern Ocean, which was named a whale sanctuary in 1994. In 1986, the International Whaling Commission set a global ban on the whaling of all types of whales, but this has not stopped the killing of these helpless whales. Since I was a little girl, these majestic and intriguing creatures have always captured my attention and affection. As an adult, I have become enraged watching shows such as Whale Wars, which shows the illegal poaching of whales. My hope is that after I inform you of the terrible conditions surrounding the killings of whales, that you will support anti-whaling efforts and take a stand on your own basis. Since 1930, over 50,000 whales have been killed in the oceans around our world. The killings of these whales provides food and fuel for many cultures. But the means used to kill these whales are cruel, inhumane, and painful for these beautiful creatures. Back in prehistoric times, whales were killed by either a harpoon thrown by a single swimmer in the water or by boats surrounding the whale and then throwing the harpoons. Now there are many forms of painful forms of killing these whales. These methods include harpoons with embedded grenades that are supposed to detonate once they are at least a foot within the whale's body, killing them instantly. But if the detonation is not accurate, which is, happens in many cases, the whale endures just a portion of their body being blown off while they are still conscious and dragged up the skidway of the back of a boat by the harpoon still in their body if they are alive. Some Japanese whalers just simply shoot a harpoon through a whale, drag it up the skidway, and begin cutting it open on deck while it's still alive. In Norway, the fishermen drive the whales toward the beach with their boats. Once the whales reach shallow water, they either beach themselves in fear and have their spinal cords cut, or the Norway fishermen will drag them from the shallow water by a hook being stabbed into their air sacs pull them up onto the beach, and then cut their spinal cord. These defenseless creatures have no means of protecting themselves or evading their capture. Since the International Whaling Commission set a ban in 1986, these countries claim scientific research as their reason for killing these whales. But the IWC doesn't have the means to prosecute. The food and fuel obtained from their death can be provided through other sources such as mineral oil. This form of oil is much cheaper than whaling, so the killing of these whales is useless and pointless. Whales not only add beauty and a sense of majesty to the ocean, but they also help balance our ocean. Without whales, the supply of plankton would boom out of control. The existing plankton would not have enough food supply, and they would overpopulate. Then their dead bodies would begin to suck the oxygen out of the water. Plankton regulate and supply over 70% of our atmospheric, acid, or atmospheric oxygen that we use. The lack of oxygen would begin to kill other animals in the ocean. Without the whales, our oceans are in danger of overpopulation and a lack of oxygen. In 2009, there were seven species of whales on, in danger of extinction. If not to simply protect these beautiful creatures, then whaling should at least stop to maintain the balance of our world. The act of whaling is wrong and cruel, but fortunately there is a significant number of anti-whaling groups that are putting themselves between the whales and their killers. Fortunately, there are people out there, braver than most, that put their lives on the line every day to intercept the Japanese whaling fleets in the Southern Ocean. The Sea Shepherds, headed by Paul Watson, spend months following the whaling ships from Japan, Norway, and Iceland to attempt to enforce the IWC moratorium. But the IWC and other organizations need more forceful punishment for the killings of these whales illegally. They do not have the means to enforce and prosecute the violation, so a sort of police organization must be set up to stop this. This organization needs to be given full legal ability to stop by any means or fine these whalers for doing the killings they do. Establishing a police organization needs to have support from the public and backed by other countries willing to aid. Establishing this type of organization will not sit well with the Japanese, Norway, or Iceland countries as they are the ones who kill for research. There will be resistance, but if strictly enforced, 
and if they do not let up or waver, the picture will become clear that killing whales in our oceans will not be tolerated. Without the whaling pop population being replenished, we cannot ex expect stability in our ecosystem to be maintained. As I stated previously, our oceans are quickly being emptied from many different species of whales. But the balance of life not only in the sea and out depends on sus sustaining these lives. If saving them for the principle of stopping their brutal and senseless killing isn't enough of a reason for you, keeping a balance of our ecosystem should be. By taking the blood of these whales out of our oceans, whales will flourish and thrive. Captain Paul Watson once said that he measures the intelligence of these whales by their ability to harmoniously exist with the natural world. By this standard, whales are so much more intelligent than we are. I strongly believe that we are here to protect and help those who cannot do so for themselves. It is our responsibility to take care of and sustain the ecosystem of our planet. Maintaining the whale population will ensure a balance of our ecosystem for many generations to come.